Hey guys, welcome back to Out of Work Outdoors. This is Connery. Today we're talking about fish finders. Everything from small ones like this all the way up to the high end ones like this. We're going to cover everything you need to know, so don't go anywhere. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. It's Connor from Out of Work. Today uh, I just want to go over some of the uh, questions that we've uh, been receiving. So in our last video on uh, five reasons why you suck at fishing, uh, we also we left a little thing in there where if you wanted us to cover electronics, you know, please let us know. And there's a bunch of people that said, yeah, go ahead and do it. So this is the video right here. Uh, today we're going to talk about fish finders. We're talking about the technology you get at the prices you pay. And I've done a quick look on the internet just to see what's available from the four major uh, players. The four major players are Hummingbird, Lawrence, Garmin, and Ray Marine. And they're all in that order too. Okay, so I will be representing mostly today with Hummingbirds. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that. Right? But I will leave some links in the description so you can go buy the ones I'm talking about, the ones that I personally use, okay? All right, and what I'm going to be talking about is primarily this unit when I first started to this unit, which is still in the Stella, to this unit that I am currently running on my kayak and hybrid killers unit that he runs on his kayak okay so fish finders it's a big it's a pretty big mystery actually if you think about it um you go you go to the store there's there's a line of them right and everything's from 100 to oh my gosh five thousand dollars right so you want one that's going to work for you but you don't want to break the bank but then again, you might not want to buy it if you're going to outgrow it real, real quick, right? So I'm going to kind of break it down for you guys, okay? So based on my experience, you know, uh, I'm, I am an electronics engineer. I work for an ultrasonic company uh, that's pretty much the same technology that's in all these fish finders, right? Pretty much same technology. It's They're just displayed differently. So I'm very familiar with the electronics. And... Uh, yeah, that's that's my background on and I've been using them for like five years. So all electronics will start with this and we will build and as we go, it's not like you're losing features, you just gain more features, okay? So first and foremost, these are the little fish finders that you'll find at Walmart, Cabela's, whatever. Uh they're usually a hundred bucks to 120, 130. These are non-colored displays, you know, you'll have black and white and they're usually about three and a half inches they'll tell you that the depth and maybe they'll tell you the water temperature and that's about it i mean it could draw little cute fishes on the screen too but you're not going to get those cool arches that everybody raves about okay all right so that's that's your 100 hundred dollar fish finder okay what is good what is it good for it is good for kayaks and canoes in a pond or in a swamp or the the backwater so stuff where you, all you care about is I just want to know what the water depth is. That's it. I don't care about anything else. That's what it's good for. Okay. But as you go up in price, once you hit the two hundred dollar range, um, you will get color picture. Okay, you'll get color picture, and your screens might be a little bit bigger, or it might just be the same size. But color picture now. And you might get arches now for 200 bucks, you know? So that's what you get. It's both both of these. Anything under $200, for the, anything under 250 predominantly is still 2D sonar. And we're going to cover that too. So 2D sonar, small screen, it's going to be $200 or less, okay? So what is two traditional, they call it traditional 2D sonar or rearranged however you want. Some people just say it's 2D sonar, or some people just say it's sonar. Sonar basically is is this. This is my example of sonar. Sonar is your flashlight, and it just does this. 
and it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go to the side. It doesn't look forward like that. It doesn't do any of that. It just hangs from the bottom of your boat and just does this. It tells you the water depths. So that's two. Oh, that might be three. Back to two. Back to three. Back to two. That's traditional 2D sonar. And don't get me wrong, there's other uses for it too. But primarily, people use it to find depth. And what you do is you have to do a lot of zigzagging before you find a deep hole, okay? So that's that's 2D sonar. It's been around for, I don't even know, 30, 40 years. It's the first technology you'll ever get, 2D sonar. But once you step into the $250 range, you might get a 5-inch screen, and, and you might also get what's called down imaging. At least from Hummingbird, they call it down imaging. Down imaging is just another way a fish finder can confirm what you're seeing on 2D. Or so 2D, a lot of times you get these these arches. A lot of arches together that can be mistaken for a school of hybrids or a school of suspended crappie. But if you draw that same picture with 2D, it'll separate those clumps out. And it might just be a lay down tree with a bunch of, you know, branches coming over that there might be no fish. Or you might see a laid down tree with a bunch of branches and a bunch of little crappies inside. That, that's what 2D does. 2D, 2D, no, not 2D, down imaging. Down imaging does that. And it'll separate everything out. And you can see, like, if you see little white dots in it, that's fish. Fish inside the brush pile. So that's down imaging. That typically starts 250 to 300 bucks, okay? And typically you get that in a 5-inch screen. But if you're going to stretch it that far already, go to the next step. The next step is probably one of the i would say if you're a serious fisherman for any whether it's kayaks boats whatever if this is your first entry one and you don't want to spend over 500 dollars, this is the one you want to get get something stretch your 500 as far as you can go get the biggest screen you can get that has gps and mapping on it mapping what is mapping okay mapping is this a lot of fish finders, if they say they, they, they can take a map card, that means it's got an SD card slot on it. You can put what is called uh, lake contours or topographic maps, and it's sewed in the, in the form of an SD card. You plug it in, and it, it draws the map for you. It's, and then with GPS, it puts your boat on top of that map, so you can see where you're at in relationships to, say, an underwater bridge or old foundations, um, especially here in Oklahoma. A lot of our lakes are flood control lakes. So, so at one time, the river flowed through a city and they just dammed it. So now the river is high and the, the lake is basically covering up an entire city. Grand Lake is a great example of that. It, 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 it's just everywhere around Oklahoma. Okay, So GPS mapping is big. Why? GPS by itself is pretty good. So say you're, say you don't even use mapping. You're you're just fishing. You catch one. You put a dot on there. That's now a hot spot. It's a waypoint. It's a hot spot. It's one of your hot spots. It can be your favorite secret spot. Okay, that's GPS. Now, if you have GPS and mapping, then you can now tell why that is a good spot. It's probably a good spot because it's on a channel swing. You can look at the map and you can see where all the other channel swings are on the lake. And you can say, if they're on this part of the channel swing, they might be on that spot. On the other channel swing, on the other side of the lake. So that's why mapping is really, really good. Think about that, right? And that's what's called pattern fishing, okay? You can do a lot of that. You can say all the banks on the north side of every creek channel swing is harboring bass i don't know so you just look at the map everything on the north side go hit 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 okay or if you say all the northern banks are crap avoid all the northern banks you avoid them all okay and you start focusing on the southern banks or whatever you might be or all the big creek channels all the small creek channels things like that it's all drawn out you can you can it, it's drawn out literally drawn out and you can tell how deep the creeks are so you might even say, look, they're only in the deep creeks. So you can see that creek's deep, that creek's not. Go to that creek. That's the power of mapping. Mapping, like I said, mapping units with cards. The cards are typically 100 to 550 additional. So you want to buy something, put a card in it, it'll help you out quite a bit. Plus, it, it provides all the hazardous stuff and... Uh, 
here's another good thing with GPS is if you're navigating through hazardous areas, say a lot of stumps, a lot of rocks, say you happen to go through it one time and you had no problems, it drops breadcrumbs or trails. So you come back, you follow that same trail back out. So it's actually a big hazard helper, okay? So that or if you're night fishing, night fishing is a big deal too. Or if you're fishing in an area that where you're prone to getting lost, say, uh, I'll say a flooded timber area, or uh, or if you're fishing in Florida or something, and there's just grass everywhere, and you don't know where you're at. You know, there's like grass sticking up five feet off the water. It's everywhere. You don't know where you're at. Or say if you you made an extremely long run somewhere that you're not familiar with, uh, extremely, extremely, extremely. Uh, extremely, I can't say it again, extremely, extremely important to have GPS for anybody that's wanting to do something that's kind of out, out of the realm of what they're typically doing. So if you go into lakes that you don't typically go to, that type of stuff. So, if, especially lakes that have a lot of twists and turns, and you can't, it's not a round lake, and you have to go around islands and things like that, GPS is very, very important. So just not not just getting there, but getting back to the the boat ramp you left from. Okay, okay. So from three hundred to about five hundred, that's that's where that's going to be at. GPS and mapping is huge. Mapping. Okay. So what's a what's a real good use in terms of fishing? So you go out. Um, say you're graphing around and you're two D sonar. You're graphing. You're graphing. You're graphing. Oh, you found a big boulder, right? Put a GPS point on it. You can go around. Later, come back and make the same cast to that rock. Same cast without without going over there and trying to find it again and dropping it down. That's that's the benefit of GPS, as the benefit of waypoints. Okay, so waypoints are introduced, and then you can download the waypoints and share waypoints with your buddy, and your buddies can share it with you. I don't know, something like that. Okay, uh, next step is the, the, but those, like I said, those are typically five inches. Uh, next step, well, you would have to step up to the next feature, put it that way, would be side imaging. Side imaging is the ability to look to the side. Okay, so let me demonstrate that quickly. We'll have a better video later, but before I was telling you, telling you about 2D sonars, 2D, it literally looks like that. You have a flashlight, it goes straight down, you can see the cone on the light so the farther you, the farther up you are the bigger the cone the, the lower you are the smaller the cone so say that's two feet that's ten feet so it covers a better area right but what side imaging does is side imaging will go instead of straight down it covers it like this see how that works see how the, that technology is different so instead of seeing a oh, two inch area you can now see everything you pass by one time you see everything with this you would have to literally do this that's the difference between 2d and side imaging okay that's the biggest problem that people don't understand and for the guys that do it's such a big advantage it's such a big advantage over everybody side imaging will will, will teach you how the creeks are curving where uh, the hard spots are on the creek, uh, how the laydowns are oriented, how many laydowns are there, how many individual stumps there are in 15 feet of water. So you can waypoint every single one, make exact casts to every single one. It's, it's the biggest game changer truly is in the last, 20 years, okay? Side imaging is that big. Lawrence calls it structure scan. Garmin calls it side view, okay? But we're going with Humberbird terms because they invented this, okay? Side imaging is is big deal. Big deal. Starts about 500 for the 5-inch, but I don't really recommend the 5-inch because you're, you're cramming too much information to, to a small screen. If you're going to go with the side imaging route, at minimum, 7-inch. Seven 7-inch seven screen, Helix 7. I ran that one with side imaging for two and a half years. And then Mega Imaging came out, and I upgraded to Helix 8 when I ran the Mega Imaging. Should have went to Helix 9, but the price is too high. I still paid like 1100 bucks for my Helix 8, which I'll show you right now. That's Humbird Helix 8 Generation 3. And really, all the features kind of, all the, all the true fishing features really stop right there. Everything else from there on out is just... Uh, 
features to connect this unit to other units. And unless if you're running multiple units, that's all you really need, you know? Uh, you can step it up to a Helix 8 or even a Helix 10, a single unit, you don't need the networking capabilities. Everything is here. There's no external, like there's no other modules to uh, attach to. You get to this, it plugs in through the back, right there, and it goes to power, it goes to a sensor, and it goes to an external GPS. Oh yeah, the other thing is, these units, they will allow, the, the, the slightly more expensive units, they will allow for an external GPS. It's got a GPS built in, but the GPS built in does not have a compass. So it doesn't know with whether your boat is facing north or south or east or west. So if you put an external GPS on it, connected to this, you will then get that and it will tell you where your lineup is. So why is that important, right? So say you go, you do the side imaging thing, you find a rock in 25 foot of water and you want to make the most accurate cast you can get. Well, this, if you have the external GPS on it that has a heading sensor, you can it can tell you that you are facing straight at it with those, there's like directional stuff that's in here. You're facing straight at it. It is exactly 30 feet in front of you and you know you can bomb at 30 feet. So you make that long cast and you get out to 40 feet. And as you're dragging stuff back, you'll actually hit the rock. And once you do, your system is done. You have a lot of confidence now. You can do whatever you want. So, and also, uh, side imaging. So, side imaging, side imaging for stripers, hybrids, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of times, when you go over something with 2D, you know it's directly below you, but you don't really know how big that school is. But with side imaging, 2D, and everything running at the same time, you can say, look, Directly below me, there's about 10, but there's probably there's like another 50 out to the side to the right side Okay, then that's the power of side imaging So you also not only know where they're at but how many to the side of you also You can use side imaging to find underwater rocks. You can use them to find bridges You can use it to find other people's brush piles and you can uh, yeah, You can find dead bodies too probably. I don't know you can find cars. I found cars. I found truck tires. I found the list just goes on. And also, grass is the major thing. And a lot of people don't talk about this, but grass side imaging is magical when it comes to grass. Um, if your units are set up right, they will find grass edges for you. And you know, that's like an invisible edge that not a, little, not a lot of people know about. You know, that grass edge in that six to seven foot zone with mapping and everything, with side imaging that confirms it, yeah. You might be one of two boats on the lake that knows how to fish it properly. Everybody is either in the grass or they're outside the grass, but you can go right down the edge of the grass if you know what you're doing. If you go past it one time, you mark it with waypoints, come back, fire on it. I think uh, it's the best. It's the best in the world, basically. So, for, but once you let me talk about once you go beyond, like this is what I would call an entry level tournament uh, grade unit. Okay, once you go beyond that, what you get is a much more powerful transducer, much more sensitive also. It draws a better picture. It draws it faster. It's strictly that. More power, more speed, better picture. Okay, that's why my brother, that's why Hybrid Killer has this unit. It's a little dirty. But the Helix 10 trumps the Helix 8 in all ways. Draws faster. It's cleaner picture it's more pixel counts too i believe so it's like a standard picture to an hd picture put it that way and it's quite a bit more too it's like 1800 bucks i think and i paid like 1100 for mine so it's like twice the price okay and also that can do a lot more other networking stuff that you'll never do on a kayak but that, that's that's more of a boat unit a bass boat tournament grade unit where it can link to freaking everything okay so this one is this one can link also but i don't think it has as much features as that one uh in terms of that higher end type stuff so so yeah uh we're just, we're just gonna end it there uh let me know if you have any questions because we're gonna do a part two we'll, we'll answer all the technical questions you know power requirements battery requirements external gps's networking capabilities and you know whatever you guys want to talk about put them in the comments below and like i said i'll i'll in the descriptions, I'll link to three units that I would recommend. And, uh, yeah, 
Okay, there are obviously going to be hummingbird units, but uh, right off the top of my head, I'm thinking uh, at minimum, I would like you to have a a GPS Helix Five. GPS with mapping Helix 5. It's probably going to run about 450, 300, 450, 50. And then you're going to have a tournament one, which is going to be a Helix 7 uh, with side imaging. It's going to be a mega imaging. And uh, on top of that, you know, if you want one that's for like, like I would say, you know, you're only going to buy one. It's going to last for a while. There it is right there. Helix 10 with a side imaging. Okay, so those are definitely three models. This is not even one of the ones I'd recommend right now after using it for a little bit. Should have went to the Helix 9. Should have went to Helix 9. But, you know, also, this is the biggest one that I would recommend for a kayak. My brother's obviously got a bigger one, but personal preference is you don't want to go much higher than the Helix 9 or 9-inch screen because it just kind of gets in the way, you know. So, anyways, uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think of the video and uh, uh, any questions you might have about fish finders, frequencies, whatever. Let me know. We'll try our best to, 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 to respond to it, okay, because... We've got a lot of friends that are hummingbird reps. We have people, I have friends that work at Lawrence, and I have people that have tight connections to Garmin as well. So maybe just Ray Marine's the only one that I don't have a lot of connections to. So if any questions, let me know. I'll try to bounce off one of the guys if, uh, if I don't personally know myself. And uh, maybe we'll see you in the next one. So before you go away, give me a like. If I helped you out at all, give me a thumbs up. Uh, sub to the channel because you don't want to miss part two. And uh, thanks for uh, hanging out with us. All right. See you guys on the next one. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching, but stop freeloading. We need you guys to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the bell. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And we'll see you guys on the next one.